Switzerland in January. The domestic football league has gone into hibernation and the locals take to the mountains to indulge in their usual winter pastimes. The Swiss have produced some of the world's finest skiers but they can also boast some of the globe's best athletes in a sport with which they're not immediately associated. This is the Swiss beach soccer team. Somehow this small landlocked country produced a side good enough to reach the FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup final in 2009. And they'll line up in Italy later this year with the serious intention of going one step further. What's more remarkable is that the sport didn't even exist here before the year 2000. Angelo Scherinzi, player coach Swiss national team. Back in the year 2000, I discovered beach soccer on television. It was a European beach soccer league match in Monaco. From that point, it was clear to me that I wanted to establish beach soccer in Switzerland. I was very enthusiastic about this sport because I've always liked traveling. I've always liked sand, sun, sea and football. When I saw it, I was infected by the beach soccer virus, so I established it in Switzerland. Angelo Scherinzi is the only player to make his living from the game, and he's the man behind Switzerland's beach soccer movement. The 39-year-old has been player coach from day one, hand-picking footballers he believed would excel on the sand. Whilst he focused on the team, the Swiss beach soccer president, Reto Wenger, began the task of raising money to fund their entry into international competition. And whilst it may surprise many, the nation took the sport to its heart. We had a great example with beach volleyball here in Switzerland. They were very successful, even in the early stages. That sport is now about 25 years old. We had great players too, so the Swiss people were already receptive towards a beach sport. Moreover, though Switzerland lacks beaches and the sea, we have a certain attitude towards life, so we can appeal to our people, as our matches satisfy a certain desire within the Swiss. Ironically, Switzerland's modest size also helped. It meant the national team could essentially act as a club, with players from all over easily being able to gather in the country's only beach soccer hall in Basel. But it was Scherinzi's ability to identify and nurture this talent that made them competitive. In 2005, they were crowned European champions, and they followed this with runners-up spots in both 2008 and 2009. And after their FIFA World Cup heroics, they can now boast the golden ball and golden boot winner amongst their ranks. This is a quite extraordinary team. Number 10, Stefan Mayer, national team, Switzerland. When I tell others that I'm a beach soccer player from Switzerland, they say, yes, but how is this possible? Switzerland doesn't have a beach or a coastline. Then I tell them about all the things we've achieved as a nation, and they can't believe it. I think we're a country that's very open to new sports. Twelve years ago, no one knew about beach volleyball, and yet we now have excellent athletes. Now beach soccer is booming, and we, as a national team, are, of course, the flagship of the whole sport. Nico Jung, goalkeeper. It's very hard to accommodate everything that takes up your time, your job, your family and your work. It's not always easy. You have to make sacrifices for sure. But I think everyone who tries to achieve big goals and is ambitious is willing to make sacrifices. It will certainly become more difficult. We already noticed last season during the World Cup qualifying matches that all eyes were on us. Since we finished in second, World Cup runners-up, people have shown us more respect. We get invitations that we didn't get before. They look at us 
in a different way. I am Dejan Stankovic, Swiss number nine. Well, like many of the others, I firstly played regular football. I wasn't a fantastic player, but I got up to the second division here. I was just 18 years old, but I realized that I wasn't good enough to reach the top. Then I met Angelo Skirinski and changed to the beach game. Now I've been playing beach soccer for seven years. I think that what I achieved in Dubai owes a lot to my teammates. Without them, this wouldn't have been possible for me. It was great. Everything just went perfectly. I just thought, I absolutely want those two titles. And when I actually got them, when I received the golden ball and the golden shoe, well, they really mean a lot to me. But as I said before, I really have to thank my teammates. They helped me succeed. And winning those two awards again in 2011 in Ravenna, Italy, will be very, very hard. The Swiss beach soccer team is clearly built on strong foundations. But despite the obvious talent and passion of its players, just to be competing with and beating the likes of Brazil, Spain and Italy, countries where the game is part of the culture, has surely surpassed any aspirations they may originally have had. What's the secret? That's a good question indeed. I think for the past four or five years, we've always focused on training with the same people, with the same team, working together. Switzerland may be the only country without a coastline, but we can still aim to be one of the best teams in the world. Another important factor is that we're certainly like a small family. We all get on very well with each other. We're good friends. We also do things together in our spare time. We don't just share beach soccer, we share other parts of our lives too. And I think that's certainly been the key to our success in the World Cup. I think we've still not achieved all that we can and we have to keep working it's all thanks to a lot of diligence a lot of training and if we keep doing that and we don't content ourselves with what we've already achieved then we can reach the very top